if Greg Kelly is the most miserable man on the internet and, and uh, Dan Bongholio is the dumbest, Greg Gutfeld is the most unfunny. I, for the life of me, it, as God is my witness, I thought there would actually be some humor that worked on Gutfeld's show or on The Five. But honestly, I don't know why. I, uh, you know, I was like, certainly people would not, because it's one thing to be like, this is a serious show, and then you're kind of funny sometimes, whatever. But it's another thing to refer to yourself as a comedian all the time, like Jimmy Dore does while he's doing his show, and be blazingly unfunny. And it's another thing also to have a, um, a, a, a show like this where it's like, we're the wacky one. And it's just, and he, you can tell, it's one thing, like, get some fucking writers or something. But you can tell he writes these things down himself and he thinks they're funny. It's bizarre. <laughs> Gutfeld is hilarious. Really bad. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how he convinces himself that these are great ideas. Like, it's one thing to, to do it once. Like, you write something, this will be hilarious. And then when you read it, I like, that ah, didn't work. Johnny Carson used to basically build his career on that idea. Was that they were like, oh, this will work. It didn't work. And it was kind of charming how he would brush it off as like, well, we thought that would work, but it would not. Um, and, but Gutfeld, you can tell he really believes it will work and believes it did work even in spite of not, I don't know, like every time I've watched this shit, I am, I don't know why I'm amazed. Cause it's, it's awful and hope springs eternal and I believe in the power of comedy. So let's try. Ugh. This, by the way, this is called, I want to talk about jokes. This is called Gutfeld. The media wants Trump back. Now, Democrats definitely want to talk about Trump because he's, he's an albatross hanging around the Republican Party's neck. And the irony is that these folks are like, all they want to talk about is Trump. Well, why would your opponents want to talk about the guy if he's popular and a winning strategy? Exactly. So the, if the media is in line with the Democrats and big tech and they want Trump back and they hate you, maybe they believe that he's terrible for your side and they want to use it. Yeah, the Gutfeld is based on the Garfield logo. It's uh, again, it's adorable, isn't it? Oh, God. Won the Olympic bronze medal in, in staring. Oh, okay, they're trying to, like, they, there's that uh, Colbert joke where he puts somebody's picture up and he names them out. Yeah, they, it's, he's trying, they do that with Gutfeld. Somebody, the, the idea is that the producer does something about Gutfeld every time because it's always got to be about him. Thursday, everyone. Ugh. Well, it's day eight without Kat on the show. <laughs> As you know, she's on her honeymoon, and I think she sent us a video. Hey, Greg, I'm still on my honeymoon. I'm in Germany, and I know I always laughed. You talked about all the movies you made here in the 90s, but you're actually super famous here. Everyone keeps telling me how much they miss their dirty Hasselhoff. That's a uh, German porn joke. <laughs> it's oh god they made her film that on her honeymoon true it took me three years to get the stench out <laughs> see what i mean see what i mean like that he thought this was brilliant this is it's one thing to have shit writers and you're like well you know show makes money i can't really i mean they know what the audience likes i don't like it but god damn they're they really hit the nail on the head it's, we're just killing it so now, he writes this, this is his idea. This is his shit. He comes up with this. They don't have other people. Oh, God. Anyway, do you feel you're being primed for something like the UFC does for weeks before their next big pay-per-view? 
The media is trying to gear us up for the ultimate showdown. Uh, no, they're not. Trump really is engaged in criminal activity. There really needed to be a search at Mar-a-Lago. We would all be happy if this motherfucker would just go on his way. And if he hadn't stolen shit and kept it, this is... <laughs> and Biden is currently president. There, there's going to be news stories about what he's doing and how well he's doing it and whether or not his poll numbers reflect that because that's what happens when you're fucking president. We're not being primed. Oy. Between Biden and Trump. Fighting out of the red corner with a record of one and one, standing six foot three, 245 pounds, hailing from Mar-a-Lago, Florida, by way of NYC, Donald the Disruptor Trump. What did he disrupt? Honestly. Again, he was mostly a rain delay in shit that mattered. And fighting out of the blue corner with a record of 50 years of mistakes and two years of embarrassments. Uh, so, get, so we should still be in Afghanistan. We shouldn't have an infrastructure bill. Uh, we shouldn't have passed a rescue package. Uh, obviously, they're against loan forgiveness. We'll just, you know, like any, any kind of student loan forgiveness at all, we'll just pass that. Um, the CHIPS Act is a mistake, according to Greg Gutfeld. Standing six feet tall, napping at three feet tall, and weighing in at 180 pounds, depending on his last bowel movement. Oh, God. Well, he said bowel movement, so I, I guess that's enough. Joe, the demented old circus monkey Biden. Uh. At least they're not picking sides. <laughs> At least they're equal opportunity offenders. At least they're not like, the Daily Show and Colbert, you know, clearly with a political slant. See how fair and balanced that was? Mm. Talk about a buildup, right? You got January 6th theater, then you got the raid and all the phony stories that followed. First, uh, it's not a raid, it was a search. Was the nuke secrets. That Which turned out to be true. It was empty folders. What's Right, what happened to the stuff in the folders? Did he take the office hole puncher? Oh, fuck me. That's a that's a punchline. That's I, I'm for fuck's sake. I don't know. I don't know how this happens. <laughs> that's a nickname for Amorosa. <laughs> you don't even know why that's a what makes that a joke. Oh, I don't even know what it means. Right. See? They just, it's an abstract. It just means they can shit on Amorosa. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Sure. Mm -hmm. You don't. I don't. Dude, he sure. doesn't, he it doesn't know what, it, none of them know what it means. It's an, it was a non sequitur that's supposed to sound sexual and they chose Amorosa because she's an enemy. Speech, fascism, civil war, a blood red backdrop that would give Dracula the willies. But if you forget. I, oh God. I don't know if I can make it through this. This is the monologue. They, they, they crafted this. This is supposed to be the funny show. God damn. Uh, here's a clip. It's a Carrie joke. I'm going to get a copyright strike because of this. They play a fucking cop. Carrie thing. It's a perfect distraction. Hold on. <laughs> of course. You know how much money they paid for that? Also, for the record, um, using a carry clip um, to say that Biden made a demonic speech, um, just if this is what happens if he actually had writers. The way you do it is not the, the blood part, it's the shutting of the doors. It's not the fire already happening. You, um, you, you show her looking like this and everybody laughing and then the door is all shut. That's that because she turns evil. It's, it wouldn't be funny anyways, because he wouldn't be able to carry it off. It'd be just sad. I would feel like, I would feel bad giving this guy real jokes because you just know they're going to be pissed away. Trump makes a perfect distraction. It's like when Cavuto... Why? Oh, because he sucks. He's terrible for your side. Sorry, but he, it's just like, what? <laughs> of course, Trump makes a perfect distraction. It's like when Cavuto wears bike shorts to a funeral. All right, I, again, non sequitur inside Fox bullshit. 
But when every metric reveals failures of left-wing policies, why wouldn't you try to deflect to the guy who tracks cameras like me getting out of a limo in a micro skirt? <laughs> yeah, you're thinking about it, though. That's all I want. I want you to go home and think about it. Mm. They're pretending not to, but the media wants Trump back. And why not? Let's compare the last two presidents. Yeah, let's. Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, yeah. Hold on one second. Is this what we're going to do? We're going to show him going, make America great again? You're not going to, uh, you don't think they're, well, maybe. Maybe he will. Hold on. Maybe he'll do, Legal, yeah, look. maybe he will. Maybe he'll do, um, like, they do action replays in magnified fortune. Kleptocracy, and klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> that runway is like an ice skating rink. And the first step, I said, you know, this sucker is slippery. I think it was put in by the Democrats. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him in a uh, foot. foot Excuse me. And I thought that was the sun in my eyes. It's these stupid lights, these people. <laughs> I mean, what are we, what are they doing? This is my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this, oh, oh, you switched on me. The lights. Yeah, they were behind him. I, I, they really liked that one. Oh, good. I always look orange. And so do you. <laughs> Bro, no wonder they miss the guy. So maybe it's time to ask ourselves, do we miss him too? Yeah, I can tell from your face. Right? Because remember, he causes serious emotional responses in people. He's like the human version of chasing a cigarette with a large black coffee. You know, you get nervous, your heart starts beating, and you start looking for- What? Toilet. <laughs> I have friends that can't talk about him without physically changing. Just check out my neighbor Steve when I mentioned Trump. Oh, boy. All right, and then they're, they're just buying clips. Do they have, like, a... a these are, are these 20th Century Fox ones? I'm going to get a copyright strike if I play the whole clip, because the music playing in the background. It's okay. We Again, why, why would he turn into a werewolf? What's the... Why don't you just go with the guy from the... The head explosion from Scanners one but this is what i tell <laughs> hold on what was this set up somebody whisper feel whenever they see me on tv <laughs> it's okay we all won but this is what i tell i mean yeah. i don't even know what it means again like, yeah he's just reading stuff that the cadence is supposed to sound funny and, but this is what I tell never. I'm not going to be able to get through this whole fucking thing. This is just dumb. This is, oh God. This is what I'm, I have to tell a never Trump person. Okay. No one says you have to like the person who works for you. And when <laughs> Yeah. Greg shits all over the staff all the time. Trump's president, he's working for you. Mm, I, I'm sorry. Is this, is this a private video we're all watching for for Ivanka? Just like a doctor, a garbage man, or if you're Hunter, a hooker. <laughs> Trump's our nation's waiter. Hi, my name's Donald, and I'll be your server for tonight. This evening's specials are law and order, building a wall, and laughing at the losers and haters. Fact is... Oh, God. People who make your life better, they can suck. If I had to undergo emergency surgery, I don't need to like the doctor. I'd take a great doctor who's a straight up. Oh my God. This is, uh, uh, this, uh, ah, it's just worse all the time. A hole over a charming, handsome fella who removes the wrong kidney. Or Jesus. Forgets to put in the one I bought off eBay. All right. First of all, I think we owe Dana Perino uh, a huge apology. Because remember we did that clip where she was filling in for Greg and she was doing the opening monologue? Remember that shit? And it was terrible? It didn't matter. It wasn't her fault. It's just awful. It, it isn't better with it. Actually, 
Gutfeld, quit. Bring back Dana Perino. At least she's angry enough to talk about something. <laughs> so yeah, I'll take Dr. Jekyll over Dr. Jill. Oh. After all, what? One's fictional, and the other's Dr. Jekyll. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Wh huh? Why? What uh, is it? Is the prevailing theory in Trump world that uh, Dr. Jill Biden is not an actual, like she doesn't have a, she has a doctorate? But look, successful people tend to be relentless and rude, right? No, no. And if people hate Trump, that's good because chances are they hate him because he really works for you. And no, he doesn't. It's it's because he's a a serial sexual assaulter with no business sense, who's been a grifter his whole fucking life and fucks up everything he touches. Dude, immigration got worse after he built the wall. He left, he ran on getting us out of Afghanistan and left with us still in there. The fuck are you talking about? Makes them work hard too. Plus he scares people. Is that so bad? Um, not all people. I'm not scared of them. Um, women around him within arm's reach certainly have reason to be put off. I want my doctor, lawyer, agent, astrologist to be feared because that means they don't take no for an answer. If you're a pro athlete. What? It come contract negotiation time, do you want Don? So all of those people could sexually assault you, Greg? Is that, you're, you're just cool with that? Knotts or Don Rickles? Don, Don Knotts is a lot more fun to be around. Trump might have been a prick when he was out for himself, but when he transferred that energy to us, well, that's magic. Think about why- Magic, yes, that's true. You believe in magic. Yes, it's more like the movie magic with Anthony Hopkins and Trump is the demented, psychotic ventriloquist dummy carrying out like MAGA hate speech as policy. Biden's been around forever. He's not looking out for you. He was always out for himself. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I can tell. That's why, he's, that's why he's got multiple properties paid for with loans from foreign banks. He didn't lead. He cut self-serving deals the way his son cuts lines at Coke. Thick. But what did... Thick? Thick. Fuck me. Trump used to say... I will never, ever let you down. And yet... I will never, ever let you down. And he did. will never let you down. I will... Uh, how the... How the... Uh, China trade deal go. How about how, how about putting the COVID response on pause until you could finish the shitty Chinese trade deal that never worked out? We did we get out of Afghanistan? Did the wall get finished? Did Mexico pay for it? Were the tax breaks for individuals um, permanent and the business ones temporary? Never let you down, I promise you that. So why did he mean that? It's because of the desires for his success mapped directly onto yours. N no, they didn't. But to never Trumpers, he feels like their scariest boss. Well, behind Kamala. But their error, their mistake is assuming that they're beholden to- No, the never, never Trumpers don't work in Kamala's office. They're Republicans. Never Trumpers are Republicans. The rest of us, it like you can't even define us as never Trumpers because we weren't going to vote for the Republican anyways. Trump, when it's the opposite, he's not your boss. He works for you. No, he doesn't. Uh, well, if he did, we fired him because he was of gross negligence and he was shitty at his job to start with. You want a monster like him working for you at all times. No, I don't. I, I, I don't need my government run by a monster. Of course, there is a price. He's like Mike Tyson. There was nothing like him in the ring, but something so relentless can't be turned off. Yeah, but you had to, because once you leave the ring, you can't just fucking punch people. Of course it could be tur turned off, dummy. That was actually, Trump was sort of like morally Mike Tyson-ish 
everywhere. It's okay if the other person gets in the ring, puts gloves on, and is willing to go at it with you. That's between you two, and you can sell tickets and do whatever the fuck you want. But once one of you leaves the ring and just starts randomly fucking punching people to show your, like, boxing prowess, get the fuck out of here. Fight goes on after the bell is rung, like after an election. When the bell rang, Trump kept fighting. <laughs> That's part of the deal. Sorry. So do you want some energy monster that's on your side or some backslapping, seemingly congenial bureaucrat who will tell you to relax when your gas bill doubles and you can't afford meat? In a few months, Joe's going to change the definition of food and force you to eat bugs. I mean, right now, these are, by the way, these are Internet talking points in the Ma in MAGA world that are just bubbling their way up. Uh, Greg Gutfeld's entire job, it's clear, is not comedy. The purpose of his show is to tit is like a volleyball, uh, like a uh, like a rudimentary member of a volleyball team. You're, they're not the spiker, they're not the server. They're the one who keeps the ball in the air or brings it up from the ground just to keep it in place so that somebody else can do something with it. Then Hannity and Tucker and them are supposed to put it over the net. So unless you need a fourth for shuffleboard, you don't need Joe. That's the choice. The brainless napping mutt you have now or the pit bull waiting in the wings? Well, if uh, um, if I want a baby shaken, I'll give you a call. I say you need the dog the media hates because he won't do what they say. He does what you say. Mm, no, he didn't. Every once in a while, this pit bull is going to take a dump on the rug. <laughs> but he's going to hump your leg. He won't stop humping the flag. But that's all he has in common with Biden. <laughs> Oof. And they end up with, period, that's the, that's how they end the monologue? Period. That's an exclamation point. Let's welcome tonight's guest. Oh no. She traded cheerleading for law because there's way less spelling. Outnumbered uh -oh. co-host Emily oh. Campagno. <laughs> These appeared on more panels than pressure-treated plywood. Fox News contributor and Washington Times opinion editor, Charlie. <laughs> Hurt so good. <laughs> this school I don't care. Charlie, I want to go to you first. I've had enough of Emily. Ah. <laughs> ah. Uh, you know, I always try when I have these conversations with people that, that are just scared, you know, of Trump returning. I go, like, if you just reframe him from being a dangerous, arrogant, arrogant monster to being your dangerous, arrogant monster, then he becomes like the best president ever. Yeah, but you have to operate on a false premise. He's like having a big giant Doberman <laughs> on a chain that you can barely control. When you have a newborn and children and your grandmother is visiting and your, uh, and, uh, your neighbor has a kid who's who's allergic to dogs and yeah you know he's like it like your plumber yeah you don't want you, you, you don't want a clean plumber you want y yes i do plumber that gets the plumbing fixes the problem want to yeah um i i would i don't know why i'm having to choose between that as a standard by the way it's a bad analogy since biden has actually passed an infrastructure bill that pulls all the lead pipes out of the country. It's fixing the lead pipes, literally. Dirty plumber. You want and and <laughs> a big I, I, dirty plumber. Harris, why did I? Why? Why? why all, why did I pick plumber? Oh, you, you sailed this ship on your own, Briz. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. All right, Not a bodyguard. You a want bodyguard. a bodyguard? Yeah. And he's he, he's 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 more like a bodyguard. A but here's dirty the thing bodyguard. That's really, just stop. Stop. Just stop. Dirty, really dirty, shirtless, maybe. I, yeah. Mike Rowe. Could my bodyguard be Mike Rowe? I, Uncle, I give up. Mike Rowe? <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep going. I apologize. No, but it's your... Um, this is... Uh, that, that is... That's supposed to be, like, um... Um... Uh, gay adjacent, adjacent, like, homoerotic comedy. But it's... No, but it's really important, uh, because the, the truth... You know, they call him an extremist. Mm -hmm. And the... Uh-huh. The reason they call him an extremist is, is because it's kind of extreme to say you can grab women by the pussy and they just let you do it. That's that's kind of extreme. 
it's even beyond uh, having a particular woman you are either in a relationship with or you know personally doesn't mind. And you just go, yeah, I don't know what to think of it was about, but uh, about Helen, man. But you could just, anybody could just grab her. She doesn't care. It's like, and she lets you do it just because she's not busy. He believes he can do this to all women anytime he wants. That's kind of extreme. It's gross. It's disgusting. Because he's the least extreme president we've ever had. Uh, no. <laughs> not by any, what the fuck are you talking about? I would argue that the lie about the, the wall being paid for by Mexico is one of the biggest, dumbest lies ever told by a president since Nixon said, I'm not a crook. And, the, and, and both parties are- uh, Honest to God, I don't know what the fuck this guy is on. Terrified of him. Obviously more so Democrats. <laughs> oh, oh, Democrats are more afraid? Is that why we keep bringing him up? Republicans. But when you think about it, th th Donald Trump is the most unifying president we have yes, yes, you, but you make a good point. Republicans and Democrats are sick of him. Ever had when it comes to the issues. If you're talking about the border, if you're- Uh-huh, the wall that doesn't work and that blows over and that turned out not to be a wall, but a slat fence and only added, uh, what, 12 miles of extra wall, which was already slated during the Obama administration. Talking about energy and none of it was paid for. Or you're talking about the economy. Oh, energy independence. We're still energy independent and- me. The economy? You mean the stock market or wage growth or unemployment? 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of Americans agree with him yeah. on those issues. That, no, no, no. We agree on the importance of them. How you achieve them is based on who you are as a leader. Like, uh, okay, 90 percent of Americans want a strong border or one, you know, or want a, a well-managed border uh, you know, uh, southern border, let's just say. One guy says, I want to achieve that through comprehensive immigration reform and uh, proper policing of the border. And the other guy says, moat with alligators. You can't then say, well, we both want the same th thing, so most people agree with my moat with alligators bullshit. But because of his style and because the media has so- Or lack thereof. Distorted so much about his the issues they've been able to portray him as this oh my god he, i thought he was a master of media i thought he had him in the palm of his hand i thought that was the thing about him is that he could control media he was he has a masterful control of the narrative he could just change the story with a in a heartbeat so, but no, apparently not he can be manipulated by me so it's it's the media that fucked with him by pointing out that mexico never paid for the wall for example or that we're still energy independent or that wage growth has gone up since Biden got in office and unemployment has gone down and the deficit's been cut in half and more people were vaccinated during Biden. This, you go ahead. I know, and, 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 and it's a complete lie. It's a total lie. And if, if people would just focus on the issues. Yeah, just on the issues, like the fact that he, it, his health care plan is two weeks away. His infrastructure bill, two weeks after that or on top of that. I don't know if these prison sentences are concurrent, uh, um, what about getting out of Afghanistan and, and yet staying? There's a reason why they never let me on this fucking show. And say he's the plumber that's going to fix the problem or he's the bodyguard that's going to fix the problem. What? He's like an 80% guy. Yeah. No, he's not. He's, he's the plumber who pulls out a piece, says, I don't have this piece. I don't even, I don't even know how you'd have this kind of piece. I don't have a piece like this while water leaks all over your floor and then it's your fault. That's the kind of plumber he is. Exactly, and the problem is there's that, tw the emotional component. And it's like, I, I actually have friends that admit that it's an emotional response. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, that's because you don't have any friends with intellect. That they're like, I can't, and, I, and so I always say, Emily, that he's like a three hour drive to an hour at the beach. Right. It's ex <laughs> it, it, it's expensive to get what you want with with Trump. What do you say? Jesus Christ. So that's that that's his defense of Trump. Trump is a three hour drive for an hour at the beach. Biden is a clean beach free of sharks to that young lady. Yeah, I think, you know, you can you can serve and lead at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's what we saw in President Trump. And that's. Yes, he served uh, Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping, and Kim Jong-un and led his 
family business while pretending not to. The opposite of what we're seeing in President Biden. And I, I feel that so deep. Uh huh because I was a federal attorney for so long that I never lost sight of the fact that I was a steward of everyone's money and, and my salary and Well, apparently you did because you quit. I am and whatnot. Steward Des. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you, dude. Now, like, can we just point out the fact that Gutfeld thought this was a good opportunity to take the fact that she was making the point that while she was a federal uh, officer, she was... Uh, a steward of people's money, and he decides he, he's got to make a chick joke about her. I, I, I don't know why she's not a regular. Flight attendant. Now I'm starting to understand why Dana Perino is so sour all the fucking time. Everyone's time and money. <laughs> um, and, you know, I don't forget. Look at this douchebag. He, like, he thinks that's a dunk. Fucko, she's on your side. Uh, oh. What? Can't say that. I don't forget that <laughs> to President Biden, we're literally like, look how look how hilarious he thinks that is. And again, she's on his fucking team. The enemy. Yes. To President Biden, the only reason that that Trump is now back in his crosshairs is because somehow whoever writes his speeches <laughs> have moved on from the average American that flies the flag in their front yard and cares about their children's education and cares about policy and, and crime being. Yes, they, they were never a problem. They there's no reason why they would be. And none of them, none of the people who regular who care for their children and have a flag in their yard stole fucking secrets from the government. Diminished and um, cities being safe and the border being secure. Those were the enemy before. And I haven't forgotten that. And all of the independents haven't forgotten that either because. Because they've moved 15 points in Biden's direction and he's up by seven with them now. Those polls still reflect that independents in droves are going to vote for the GOP in. No, they don't. November. So no, they don't. They can put the red backgrounds all they want. They can become carry part two. But no one's going to forget that they were the ones that were top of Biden's enemy list before he circled back to President Trump. Not enemies of Carlotta. Bad for a stewardess. <laughs> Corey. Like, really, just a second jab at the fact that she's a woman. It's just, uh. Should hey, you be hey, suspicious? Can I be a stewardess too? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I identify as a stewardess. There you uh, go. What do you? Um, Perhaps uh, more water. Yeah. <laughs> Wine. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Can you, uh, are you? Do you get a little paranoid that the Dems want Trump because they think they can beat him? They really want him to go up against Biden. I think uh, Joe Biden wants to be more like Trump, and if you look at his independent uh huh day speech. Uh, Emily mentioned the, the speechwriters a little bit ago, and I really think that we've all been duped, that these speechwriters are actually undercover agents for the Republican Party because it was just so far out there, his Independence Day speech with the red behind him, he had the Marines behind him, it was so divisive. And it's so uh, funny coming from the same person who ran on being the unifier. Okay, of the we've seen this argument before. Derp, derp, derp. <laughs> you know, he might be laying on the ground while everyone, he's running, but... <laughs> Here's the thing. If you turned off that's your a old guy joke, I think social media and main yeah, if you pay no attention to mainstream media or social media and you don't talk to anybody except staff here at Fox, you'll know the truth, which is that Trump is a winner. Free media for a month mm -hmm. when President Trump was in office, you would see that your check was better. Your bills were better. No, and especially in 2020 in particular. And if you, let's say, turned it off and left it off then, and you went through the entire uh, pandemic and you came out the other side and you lived in the woods like the Japanese soldier who thought the war was over and or thought the war was still on and lived in the woods for 10 years, and you came out now, your check would be bigger. Your <laughs> and your neighborhoods were safe. Your neighborhoods are definitely safe. N unless you're talking about during the riots themselves and what neighborhood you're talking about. Or if you live in an area where the, any of the many school shootings happened. As soon as you turned on the TV, that's when the hysteria started because what was big president? Yes, don't watch Fox News, I think it's a good lesson. That was biggest problem. He was uncorruptible because he had it already. He didn't need their money, he didn't need- 
Yeah, he does. He's broke as shit. Your influence and had no problem putting them on blast. Because let's remember, he, at one point, he was a Democrat who was cutting checks for who? Democrats. So who knows them better than the guy who's pe cutting checks for them? Mm -hmm. He did. And that was the issue. So he... He was operating in the same power circle as Jeffrey Epstein. They were cutting checks to both sides. That's how you do it. If you didn't look at the first world hysteria, mm -hmm. his deeds were pretty good. Oh, the first, I see. It's first world hysteria. Would that be a good example of where we are? I mean, it, uh, Turkey is at 86% inflation. We're at eight. <clears throat> is it a first world or third world? I mean, he's friends with Erdogan. You'd have to ask him. Problem was with the pit bull is Trump is probably the the greatest worst first responder of all time. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you throw shade, he's coming back at you. He, they threw or if he misinterprets what you say as shade, or if you're just a baby crying. This he would fight back. Exactly. So they would that would be what everyone saw, and we would forget about the deeds. Now we didn't forget about the deeds. What deeds? The health care plan again, getting us out of Afghanistan. The getting Mexico to pay for the wall? What the fuck are you talking about? How we miss the deeds because are not just the gasoline prices. And this is how they get us. They brought them down a dollar, but everyone who got an <laughs> electric bill saw them make up the difference when your electric bill is triple. It's not the same gas, dummy. And sometimes doubled mm. or, or quadrupled. So well, they, it, obviously he's talking about Texas. But they brought it down. That's the difference. If he wasn't such a first responder, and who knows, maybe he's... You know, maybe the, put a little muzzle on him a little bit. But other than that, his deeds outweighed the bots on Twitter. All right. Hey, Sean. Ugh. I, I, that might be, unless there's something like an interview or something specific to a news story, that might be one of the, have to be one of the last fucking gut felt things I, I can take. Is that, that's what the show is like all the time. I, I think, you know what's interesting is, yeah, it's unfunny and yeah, it's the same shit over and over again. And it's, you know, it's, it's basically a Trump apology uh, um, special every night. But I, I, I got to say, the thing that bugged me the most was him shitting on, was Gutfeld shitting on one of the female panelists, again, who's on his side. Like, I kind of expect him to be a dick to be, you know, if, if there was a woman who's a Democrat who's on or any of that stuff, if he had the guts, which is the other question, too. Maybe he doesn't, maybe he doesn't have the, you know, he, he can't nut up enough to, you know, it, unless they're on the team and they have to take it and it's his show. So if they, if they don't care and don't need it, you know, he'll, he's afraid to lose them or something. But the, the, the ones that think they're there to support Trump figure they just have to take one for the team. It's just fucking gross. Um, but I think we can we could put a pin in the idea that anyone has the illusion that Gutfeld is ever funny. I you know, this I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I'm shocked. I'm mildly shocked. Right? Yeah, they call it, they think Gutfeld's the new Bill Maher. He's beating Colbert in the ratings, they keep saying, which is because he gets feed over on a news channel and he's not, they're not competing with anything else. And they're also not lining up like what a lot of people watch Colbert and shows like that, and like Seth Meyers in particular. They watch them in segments on, on YouTube. So you put their numbers up and it's ridiculous. They're doing, you know, gangbusters. But it's that, you know, comparison to like people watching you know, whatever the lead-in show is or the nightly news and then going to it on a regular broadcast television station versus locking into a cable channel and falling asleep to it. The reality is, is that Gutfeld's on in the background on, a, you know, when, when these old farts are asleep with their fucking airplane catheters stuck in their hoo-ha. So, uh, again, I'm, I mean, it shouldn't be that surprising that, you know, he's this dull or whatever. I just find it shocking that he's that shitty to the women on his uh, uh, on his own show that are on his side. I, I mean, I don't, maybe I shouldn't be shocked. I'm I'm I, I'm more shocked to, at that than that he's not funny because I've yet to see him do anything even remotely funny. It seems like more like and and this might be the thing too. 
it seems to me to be largely power trip comedy, which is like a, a you see this in hack comics at clubs who do this like, am I right? Kind of as a punchline. They do this, uh, they talk about relatively topical things that bigots and assholes don't like. And they end up, well, what is the deal with this thing? It's like, I mean, it's nuts. People are insane. Am I right? And that's the extent of the entire joke. That, and, and the idea is that by being a dick, to the topic or the person that is the subject uh, of the joke that the audience joins in on the power trip of this dude shitting on that person that they the their laugh is one of recognition that aha I got you and it's uh, like it's really base bullshit low res comedy if if you can even call it that but that seems to be the root of it gutfell's whole thing is just like ego based dunking comedy based on power tripping. Yeah, bully comedy. That's, I agree. I think that's a great way to put it. It's bully comedy. And so people just like, people laugh because they enjoy the titillation of seeing other people bullied, um, you know, or, or saying naughty things and getting away with it because you can, because you run the joint, which also points to why they would like Trump in the first place. They like Trump because he, he can he can sexually assault a woman and they got to put up with it. They let you because you're a star. And I mean, they, you know, all you got to do is go on TV and call them ugly. What what can they do? It makes sense there. I mean, they, they're all it's a, there's a, a, a logical lineage in this. So anyways, um, uh, it's not funny. Comedy is smart. I agree. Um, there was only one Andrew Dice Clay. Uh, well, agreed. But even even Andrew Dice Clay was a was about inversion of a power trip. So the idea is that women are really in control, and and women were gaining control during the eighties, and there was this big shift, you know, with real men don't eat quiche and all those kind of things to push back against the equality movement, which was seen as bending too far in the other way. And so some comedy showed up to try to push back on that notion. Clay was a caricature of that idea. Um, Gutfeld's just a dick and the idea is that he's a he he's a smarmy dick on your behalf and the idea is that he's got power because he's got a television show that you don't have in the same way that trump does that's it it's it, yeah Summer's watching the uh, U.S. Open in the background. I'm going to sign off. She's back. Uh, I, I love you guys. I'll see you guys for the radio show tomorrow. Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide with Johnny Million will be on tomorrow. And uh, very exciting. And then the show tomorrow night, uh, I've, got a, I've got some work to do for that one. I've got some bits to write. Um, obviously, it's not a lot of heavy lifting as if Gutfeld is the standard these days. Fucking hell.